good. Okay, you should have highlighted already the parallels of latitude run west. Okay, the equator is the line of latitude that divides the northern hemisphere from the southern hemisphere halfway between the north and the south pole. To highlight. Please pay attention, not right now. You can last a few minutes without water, okay? Highlight the equator is the lines of latitude that divides the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere halfway between the North Pole and the South Pole. Make sure you have that highlighted. Have that highlighted. Tristan, highlight. Okay. The parallels of latitude run east and west. All right. So if we're looking at our compass, all right. Okay, latitude runs east and west, so that is this way, okay? The Arctic Circle and the Tropic of Cancer um, are important lines of latitude in the northern hemisphere. So if we're looking at the map of the world, all right, we're looking at a globe. Okay, we're looking at a globe. Where is my North Pole class? Right here? Good, North Pole. Where's my South Pole? On the bottom, good. Okay, that's my North and my South Pole. What's the middle that divides the Northern and the Southern Hemisphere aerial? Equator. Good, this is my equator. Okay, so the perils of lack. Hemisphere, the Tropic of Capricorn. The Arctic Circle, if you guys can that run east to west, okay? East to west, letter A. Okay, letter C is good, the Tropic of Capricorn, okay, and then letter D 
the Arctic Circle close by the Arctic Ocean. That's north. And then letter E. Good, the Antarctic Circle. Okay, so make sure you know those lines of latitude. Good, latitude runs east to west, so that is sideways. Okay, let's look at lines of longitude. Okay, Tristan, read about lines of longitude, please. The lines of longitude, it's right underneath the Tropic of Capricorn. The um, meridians. Good. So highlight the lines of longitude. They run north and south. What are you doing, Tony? Okay, put on your mask, please. Same thing, Olive. Okay, make sure when you're inside, put on your mask, Adam and Cam. Okay, highlight the lines of longitude. They run north and south. So latitude, east and west. Longitude runs north and south, okay? They come together at the North Pole and the South Pole, okay? The lines of longitude are also called meridians. Highlight this. The prime meridian runs through the western parts of Europe and Africa, okay? The prime meridian runs through the western parts of Europe and Africa. So. When it's a line of longitude, they run north to south, okay? And then this would be the prime meridian. Running through the center of north um, of Europe and then Africa, okay? How at the top of the page on the right-hand side, the meridians are used to measure distance east or west of the prime meridian, okay? Yes? Quickly. Okay, the meridians are used to measure distance east or west of the prime meridian, okay? The western hemisphere includes the lands west of the prime meridian, and the eastern hemisphere includes the lands east of the prime meridian. So that's kind of self-explanatory, okay? This is the east hemisphere. This is the West Hemisphere. The west of the Prime Meridian is the Western Hemisphere. The east of the Prime Meridian is the Eastern Hemisphere, okay? This includes the lands east of the Prime Meridian. As you can see from the globe, the Prime Meridian does not divide the hemispheres exactly. When the lines of latitude and the lines of longitude are shown together on the map, they form a grid of squares. By using the numbers on the grid, we can pinpoint any location on the Earth. Okay, so if you guys notice on your map or on the globe, okay, so there's 90 degrees, 80 degrees, 60 degrees, 40 degrees. That's how it's kind of like a clock grid. Cameron, put your mask on. Okay, so those are lines of longitude going up and down. Latitude, if you guys can see, same thing, 90, 80, 60, 40, 20, 0. Okay, it's kind of like a grid. You guys see those squares? That are, those are the lines of latitude going east to west, okay? So F would be the prime meridian, all right? So that is the geography facts of lines of latitude and of longitude. Make sure that you have highlighted everything that you need to highlight, okay? Because these will be on your next quiz. All right, I'll announce when our next quiz is next week, but make sure you guys are highlighting that, okay? You guys did pretty well on your test yesterday. I'm still grading them, so good job. 
But then let's look at our maps on page number 315. Okay, three, page 315. All right, let's go through our map one more time. And then um, tomorrow we're going to go over a new map of the Middle East. Okay, we're going to have to mow countries of the Middle East. So right now we are studying the ancient Middle East. Okay, now tomorrow we're going to start a new chapter of the modern Middle Eastern time. Okay, so let's review our map. Okay, let's earn some tickets. Okay, what is, ooh, make sure you raise your hand. Actually, let's start with Gavin, okay? What is letter A? What mountain range is letter A? <coughs> Try to do it from memory. Put your mask on. No one wants your boogers. Sorry? The Urals Mountains, good. Cameron, what is letter B? Letter B? What mountain range is letter B? Not the Elbrus mountain. What mountain range is it in? I was looking at the wrong number. What is it? I was looking at Elbrus, but it's It's not Mount Ararat. The mountain range, letter B. Who can help him out? Emmeline? The Caucasus Mountains. Okay, letter B is the Caucasus Mountain. That is the letter B mountain range. Okay, letter C, what mountain range is that, Josiah? Um, Welcome to the uh, Himalayas, good. Okay, letter C is the Himalaya mountain range. What is letter D, what mountain is that, Cameron? Now you can say it. Not out Bruce. Where did Moses land, or the ark land? Uh, Noah, sorry. Noah, where did his ark land? Ararat. Ararat, good. That is Mount Ararat. Ararat. Okay. What is letter E? What mountain is that, Adam? We're on page 315. Good. Mount Everest, Olive. What is letter F? Mount Fuji, good. Ariel, what mount or, uh, desert range is letter G? Good, the Gobi Desert. Okay, what desert range is letter H? Um, Tony. The Rubal Kali, good. What is letter? Or number one, what C is that, Shane? What C? Not the red C, Tristan. The black C, good. What is number two, Landon? What C is that, number two? Caspian. Good, the Caspian C. What C is number three, Shane? The Red Sea, good. Make sure you know the differences between those seas, okay? Number four, what sea is that, Livy? The Arabian Sea, good. Number four is the Arabian Sea. Let's look at the rivers. Number five, Cameron. Number five. It's by Mesopotamia. Sorry. Number five, not the Euphrates. Who can help them out? Oh. Emily? Uh, Good, the Tigris River. Okay, what's number six then, Cameron? The n one next to it. The Euphrates River. Okay, make sure you're studying these. You should know these by now. We've been reviewing them. Okay, what is number seven? Uh, Gavin. Oh, 
river is that one? Good, the Indus River. Okay, what is number eight, Josiah? The Huanghe and the number nine, Adam. Good, the Yangtze River. Okay, make sure you guys are still studying that. We are just going to add on to it as we go along. Okay, go ahead and take out your reading books. Mountain Pathways, okay? Mountain Pathways. Boys, I didn't say talk. I just said grab your reading book. Cameron and Tony, grab your reading book and sit down. Mountain Pathways. Go sit down. Put your mask on, Cameron. If I have to tell you again, you're standing. Because that's direct disobedience. Because I put you, I told you to put it on, and you still kept, kept it off. Okay? Mountain Pathways, let's start our story. Tonight for homework, you are to read this story out loud to your parents. If you've already begun, that's awesome. But you need to read this out to your parents. Make sure you get your signature, but go to page 132. Okay, page 132. We are reading about the boy who voted for Abraham Lincoln. Okay. You want to start? Go ahead. We are on page 132. Did anybody spray cologne or something? Um, oh, it smells good. Okay. Page 132, the boy who voted for Abe Lincoln. What page are you on? 132. I'll call on you guys. So be ready. Make sure you guys are paying attention. Okay, pause for a second. Today we are going to learn how to read with expression. So, I don't want you to read like this, okay? Sam Adams climbed to the wagon seat and spoke to the yoke of oxen. Okay? Shh. Okay, you'll get your turn. You'll get your turn. But Tony, I want you to read with your best expression, okay? Nice and loud. Sam Adams climbed to the wagon seat and spoke to the yoke of oxen. Go ahead. Good, that was a lot better. Continue reading. Heading. Jolting. On the hard plank. Calico. Skirt. Good. Okay. All right. Good. <laughs> that was a lot better than what you normally do. Okay. Ariel, go ahead. Picked up where he left off. She thinks she says, hurry now, Sam. How do you think she said it? Hurry now, Sam, she called. Good. 
Thank you, Josiah. Go ahead and pick up where she left off. That we have filled. Okay, read this with a little more expression. So the wheat field meant everything to his father, to the whole family. If anything happened to it, next winter would be a barren one. So food, scarce, money, scarce. It's kind of like a really sad time in their life. So it's really important that you portray how the author wants you to feel. Okay, Sam. There had been an empty ache. Thank you. Okay, so you guys feel the sadness yet? No, because I sure don't. All right, so at this time, she's like, hurry along. She, she, she wants to make sure that he gets the... Um, gets the oxen and everything hitched up because if they didn't then because they need money so Emmelyn please face forward okay so the wheat field meant everything to his father to the whole family if anything happened to the wheat field the winter would be a barren one okay because it we read a herd of cattle roving over the hills had already destroyed the Hillis's cornfield and the Morse oats so they didn't want that to happen to them yes Tony It's his son, but then this Sam is her son, but then Sam is saying he didn't want another barren winter. Okay, let's go with Livy. Cameron, I'm not going to call on you if you keep talking out. He tried to get the oxen to move faster. Did he? Sam gave a glad shout. Okay. So bumping and sliding, the wagon with its burden of fence rails came finally within the side of the field. Sam gave a glad shout. He was almost there. Okay. Make sure you're reading with expression. Go ahead. And the wheat. Good. He could see his father riding along the far end. The sand trails had stopped the oxen. Through them, it had been bounded like a tall acorn. Too late, Sam cried, so it rose and sang bored. The white wheels were softly up to the head in the sticky mud. So, what's going on here? Cameron? What happened on his way? The were Good. Shane, what happened? He got stuck in the mud. Thank you, Livy. Okay, so this is a very, very important time in their lives. Okay, they need the money, but then on his way, we don't really know where he's going right now. Okay, but on his way, the wagon gets stuck in mud. Okay. Adam, go ahead and read. Get up, cried Sam desperately. Go ahead. Shh, nice. Please stand. I'm, I'm looking for where, it, where we left off. Stand up, Adam. Okay, right there. 
right here. Cameron, Tony, please don't talk out. Get out. Do you think if he was desperate, he'd say, get out. Come on, give me something. Give me a cry of desperation. Come on, say, get up, cried Sam. Okay, give us. Shh, guys. Come on. Ugh, oh, come on. Who can do that for him? A cry of desperation. Shh. Go ahead. Okay, get up. <laughs> Cried Sam desperately. Okay, continue on. That's a cry of desperation. Go ahead. Continue on. Thronging. Good. Okay. No use now to call his father. Go ahead, Gavin. Someone was coming down the road. Who was, Who was it? Continue on. <laughs> Continue on. See how Gavin's reading with expression. It sounds great. <laughs> Thank you, Cameron. Sorry, good job, Gavin. Go ahead. Yes, you do. No talking, though. Adam, turn around. Is that a question? Heard. Good. Bellowing. Thank you. So he's stuck in the mud. He's crying desperately for his father, but no one's hearing him because the wind is drying him out or drowning him out. And then he's like, if I don't get these, then I'm not going to be able to provide for my family. And then the cows were coming closer and they were eating all the crops of the field. Okay, so while he was there, someone came to help him. Yes. Yes, you may. Okay, Tony. Okay, Ariel. Sam. Okay. Okay, Gavin, tell him where does it say that? 
or tell Ariel where it says that. Yep, it's at the top of the page on page 133. So he's 12 years old now. So he, some of you guys, listen. Okay. Okay, please be quiet. Okay, so imagine being only 12 years old and you're already helping provide for the family. Okay? So this is what <laughs> So this is what Sam was helping his family do. Okay? So when the man came, he helped him out of the way or out of the mud. Okay? Tristan, did you already read? No. No? Okay, go ahead and read um, his heart hammering gratefully. We're in the middle. Shh, please stand. Instructions. <coughs> Bless you. Busily. Okay, so now we know that he's going to, in the wagon, he's going to bring the wood posts to patch up his field. Okay, he's going to patch up his field because some wild cattle or something are eating all the farmer's crops. So he, if he didn't get to that field in time, the cattle could go onto their field and destroy their crops. And they couldn't, they wouldn't have food and they couldn't sell the food to make money. Okay, that is why he was trying desperately to get there really quickly. Okay, good job. Um, Landon, go ahead and pick up where he left off. At a canter. His brow. His brow handkerchief. A handkerchief. Like a little hanky. He was wiping his head. Thank you. So, Abe, Abe who? A friend of yours, Pa? Okay, so who does he say that Abe is? Josiah, continue to read on. Don't know. Don't know he's as he's got much of a chance Thank you. Okay, Emmeline. So he's talking about Abe Lincoln. He's saying he's the new president for nomin like he's nominee uh, the new Republican nominee for president. Okay, he's saying I don't know if he's got much of a chance though. Go ahead, Emmeline. 
Why not? Make sure you're following along. But something did not Where are you? We should be at the top of page 135. I don't need your opinion, and I don't need your opinion. Okay. As good. Educated folk. Educated folk. Steph Stephen Douglas. Stephen Douglas, for instance. Good, thank you. So he says, that was Abe Lincoln. He's our new nominee, or nominee for president for the Re Republican Party. But he says, I don't know if he has, a he has a good chance, though. Sam's asking, why not? Um, we'd probably be lucky if we had someone like him because Abe just stopped to help him. Okay, so the dad is saying, well, it's because he's going up against people who are lawyers, they're smart, educated people. Okay, that's why he was saying Abe Lincoln didn't have that much of a chance. Okay, but you're going to vote for Mr. Lincoln, aren't you, Pa? You'd like him for him to be president, wouldn't you? He says, you bet I'll vote for him, Sam. Nothing can stop me from pulling my vote for Abraham Lincoln come November. Yeah? Well, we'll talk about that, okay? Give me a second. So, but he said, but something did stop Hank Adams from voting from Abraham Lincoln, okay? So he's like, yeah, I'll vote for him. Nothing's going to stop me from voting. But then actually, that's what he kind of told Sam just to kind of appease him or please him and say, yeah, sure, I'll vote for him. But something did stop his dad from voting from Abraham Lincoln. He says, in early July, he was thrown from a horse and seriously injured. Judith, his wife, his young wife, and his son, Sam, were beside him when he died. Okay? He says, don't forget the wheat, Sam. Take it into Springfield. Okay? So he, that, there's dashes there because it's kind of indicating the way that he's talking. So he's not talking like very smoothly. He's talking with kind of breaks. That's why there's dashes in that sentence. So wait, he's like this. Don't forget. No, he says, don't no. forget. No. <laughs> Shh. There's different pauses, but he's not like that. But it's more of like a, more of like a slow kind of talk. MLN, sit up. Shh. He says, don't forget the wheat, Sam. Okay. Shh. All right. Take it into Springfield, he sighed. He closed his eyes. I meant to take it in election day when I voted for Abe. Too bad. Okay? So, something did stop Hank Adams from voting. What stopped Hank Adams, Tristan? Him dying. Him dying. Okay? Shh. Listen. Okay? Please do not talk. Please do not talk. Okay? So, he's saying, it's actually kind of a spirit that he's talking to not a spirit but since his father Hank died he kind of talks to his dad when he needs some help it's kind of like his dad is watching over him okay so that's what shh, okay that's what he's saying he's like I need your help dad but the reason why that his dad didn't come was because um, he was dead honestly so in the part where he's saying, don't forget the wheat, Sam, take it into Springfield. And that's kind of saying when he's dying, he was thrown from his horse. Obviously, if you're injured, you can't talk normally. It's like his last words to him. Okay. So two weeks later, Sam answered a knock at the door. Two men outside. This is the Adams farm? Asked one. Yes, sir. Will you come in? Sam answered. Who is it, Sam? Called his mother. 
She came in, wiping her red, roughened hands on her apron. I'm Joe Winship, Mum," said the taller of the two strangers, and this is my partner, Jerry Hogan. We brought you a letter from Mr. Abe Lincoln, okay? So tonight, you're gonna finish the story, page 136 to 140, okay? Not finish the story, but 136 to 140, okay? That's not the rest of the story, but we'll finish that on Friday, but you need to know what the letter said, okay? And we'll talk about that tomorrow. <laughs> All right, guys, can that's we, called suspense. But go ahead and prepare for recess. Can we have lollipops? Shh. Go ahead and prepare for recess. Wait.